service. We are so excited to have you guys here. Um, I don't know about you guys, but where we're at, it is pouring rain, but the church is full. So praise God. Um, we just want to acknowledge you guys for showing up. 
95% of the battle is just getting here. And God's word says that when you approach him, he approaches you. When you draw near to him, he draws near to you. So just know that God is with you. Doesn't matter where you are in the world. Um, and wherever you are, comment, type in the chat. Let us know where you're watching from. We've got people watching from Africa and Australia and all over the world, which is amazing. Um, so that's part of our online community, which is exciting. Also, if you speak Spanish, then let us know in Zoom because we actually have a specific Zoom room just for you where we can translate it. So if you speak Spanish or someone in your family speaks Spanish, they can still join the service and have it translated. So uh, today we have a guest pastor, amazing, amazing message. He was talking about you are the light of the world. Um, and Matthew, powerful, powerful message. So if you're one of those people where you feel like God has just blessed you with something inside of you, you've got potential inside of you, you've got light inside of you, then this is the message for you. Also, if you know someone where you look at them and you're just like, man, they have so much potential inside of them, make sure to send them this link. Send them this link because this can change their lives dramatically. I was sitting over there and I was like, wow, Lord, this message is powerful. Um, and so let us know if you want that. Send that link to as many people as you can. I want to go over a couple couple few announcements. So Monday, we've got our new believers class at 7 p.m. That's here in person. We don't have it online yet, but I'm sure that will happen at some point. Also, we have Zoom prayer at 7.30 p.m. So if you guys who are watching online, um, you want prayer, we have that at 7.30 p.m. on Monday nights. Tuesday, we have our men's devotional at 7.30 a.m., um, and that's here at the building at Fear Not Coffee. So if you're one of the guys and you can get here, it's an amazing um, time just to, to have fellowship with other men and to really dive in the Word and, and just have a good time together pursuing the Lord. Um, and then Wednesday, we have our food outreach. Thursday, we have X18 at 7 p.m., so you can join us online or in person. That's where iron sharpens iron, which is powerful. And then uh, just to let you guys know, next Sunday, the 21st at 6 p.m., we have Hope Street Revival. So we have our services in the morning, and then we have Hope Street Revival in the evening. So you can do that in person, or you can do it online, but that's where we come together. We worship the Lord. We praise. We pray. We do all those things. And I don't know about you guys, but for me, every single time I'm at Hope Street, my life changes dramatically, like every single time, no joke, uh, which is amazing. So um, a couple things before I pass it off to our online campus pastor, um, I just want to talk to you guys about serving online. You know, just because you're online does not mean that you can't serve and get involved. And I know for me personally, when I started coming to the church, that was great. But when I started serving at the church, that's when my whole life changed. You know, the word says, uh, you know, Jesus said that he did not come to be served, but to serve others. And so we're called to have that servant heart. And, and for me, when I started serving, that really changed things because I was coming into church and I wasn't, you know, I was kind of, it felt like I was sitting on the sidelines. You know, it felt like I was sitting in the, in the crowd, in the audience, but it didn't really feel like I was on the field. And as soon as I started serving and volunteering and giving my time and energy to other people, that's when things really shifted. That's when things started to feel different. And that's when I feel like I went from the, the stands to stepping onto the field. And that's when things changed. And so we just really encourage you guys uh, that if you're online, you know, it's easy to feel isolated, to feel alone, you know, when you're just watching it li online by yourself. Um, but we just want to encourage you guys because there's a lot of things that you can do online to serve. You know, we have, we're going to build an online prayer team and, and all these different things. And so we just encourage you guys, if this is something that you feel called to do, reach out to us, uh, put it in the chat, and we will connect with you and get you to be able to serve online and contribute your gifts. You know, God has given you gifts, not for yourself, but to serve others. And we know that you have gifts. And that was one of the biggest blessings for me is when I started serving, what I noticed is God started revealing all of the gifts that he's given me. And so he gives us those gifts so that we can serve others and help others transform and get closer to Christ. And so I really encourage you guys to do that. You are a blessing to someone and you don't even know it. And so uh, we're going to call you guys uh, to serve and we're going to ask you guys to serve and uh, just watch what God does, right? God loves servants of the kingdom. And so we're really excited for you guys. Um, I'm about to pass it over to our online campus pastor, Jen. Uh, she's going to talk to you guys about a couple things and then service is going to be started. So uh, we're excited and get ready and I'm gonna pass it off to Pastor Jen. Hey guys, welcome to our 11 a.m. service. I'm so excited that you guys are on. For everyone who's watching, wherever you're watching, maybe you can write down in the chat where you're watching us from. I know that there's some people in NorCal. I know that there's some people in Vegas. I know that there's people kind of all over the U.S. and even across the sea. Um, so welcome everyone. I just want to shout out 
some of the new people I met through this week. Uh, Miranda, who is from NorCal, I am so excited that you have now joined the Fearless family. I was able to meet with her earlier this week. And um, if you're new or if you have been coming for the past few weeks or months and you haven't let us know, I would love for one of our leaders is going to have the link down below and it's going to have a new person form. And what that form is is so that I can connect with you guys because I honestly feel like the only way to have church is through community, right? So um, I'm super excited to meet all the new people. So don't be afraid. Um, it's just a one-on-one. -on -one. I would love to get to know you and for you to get to know me and also to get you plugged in and serving, not just um, at church, but X18 and other ways, because I know that serving online and having church online just looks so different nowadays. But um, welcome, Miranda. She was able to also join us at X18, so that was really cool and really special. Uh, just to go over some announcements, which I know Chris kind of did, today is Serve Sunday. So if you are interested in serving, I know serving looks, on, serving looks a little bit different online, but it doesn't take away from us being planted and serving in the house of God. So there's so many ways to serve. You can serve on Zoom, you can serve on YouTube, on Instagram, on all our social media platforms, which is super, super exciting. And not just that, we are going to put together a prayer team. So um, if you would like to be a part of that prayer team, I would love for you to be a part of that and get plugged in. Um, but with that said, I hope you guys are having a great, great week. I am going to jump on uh, YouTube and say hi to everyone. And also, I would love to honor all of our leaders who are serving online, which is Becca, Jay, Jesse, Prince, Rosie, Nina, all our online leaders who are doing such an incredible week job, sorry, week after week. And um, I'm just super, super excited that this team is not going to stay where it is, that we're going to keep growing and expanding. So I'm going to jump online and just say hi to everyone. Uh, I'm going to go onto YouTube and see what everyone is saying on there. <clears throat> and if you guys could just tell me where you're watching from, I would love to shout you guys out. Um, awesome. Hi, Dominica. Hi, Michael. Uh, welcome, you guys. It's so, so nice to see you. Hi, Jay. Jay has been serving for the past few months and uh, has been doing such an incredible job. So I think we're about to get ready to go into service. Um, get your notebooks ready. Get your Bible ready. Get your worship ready because we're about to dive into worship. I'm going to say a quick prayer and um, I'll see you guys in service. God, we just thank you for this service that you're about to bring forth. I thank you, past I thank you God, for, the pa for Pastor Neil Smith, who's going to bring the word, God. I thank you for the worship team. And I pray, Jesus, that you encounter every single person that's watching today and even in the coming weeks, God. I pray that you prepare their hearts and that you prepare the space in their homes, God. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you guys soon.
Do we have anybody excited to be in the presence of God, the house of God today? Come on, give it up for yourself. You pushed through some real rain. I'm impressed, I'll be honest. Look to your neighbor and say, great job. You made it. Why don't you turn to someone next to you, give them a hug, a high five, welcome them into the house of the Lord today. Online, we welcome you. We are so excited to have you here with us as well. In person, as you're finding your seats, you got your coffee in hand. Now, what a special day the Lord is going to have with us today. We are excited for all that God is going to do. I'm going to pray. We're going to go back into a time of worship. If we can, why don't we lift our hands all across this room as a sign of surrender. Heavenly Father, we know that worship is our weapon and freedom is our sound. God, I pray today through the weapon of worship, we would tear down strongholds. We would encounter your peace. We would meet you in a way that transforms us. Lord, do a work in us that would extend to our friends and our family. And I pray that God, that wouldn't have to wait till the end of the message, the end of the, the altar. Do that now in Jesus' name. We honor you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody shouts, amen, amen, amen. Come on, let's continue to worship. Come on, Fearless, you ready to pray some more? Awesome. During this next song and the remainder of worship, we're going to go into baptisms. And so I want you guys to celebrate when they come out of the water and they're washing away the old and in with the new. Are you guys ready to celebrate? Come on, put those hands together.
God, we lift you up today. God, we know that you're the miracle working God, that nothing is impossible for you, Jesus. God, you are more than able, God. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
know God is able to sing this with us. God is more than able. Story, yeah. 
God, do you believe that today? That it's by our faith that moves God. He's not done with you yet. done with you today he's not done with that dream he gave you he's not done with that family member he's not done on that healing if I'm not dead God's not done if I'm not dead the Lord is not done with what he is doing in my life can we take that level of faith that level of expectancy that level of belief and can we take a moment to lift up any needs in this room a miracle that we are believing for healing that we have been expectant for that we are longing for if you have a need that only Jesus himself can meet, I want you to lift up your hand all across this room. And with your own voice, with your voice, can you begin to lift up your faith, begin to lift up your prayers, begin to lift up that expectancy of saying, Lord, I know you can do it. I know you've done it before and I know that you will do it again. Right now, under the blood of Jesus, the name that is above every other name, God, we take hold of that healing and we walk in it knowing that you are a good father. We cast down sickness and disease. We reject and rebuke a spirit of fear and anxiety. We take hold of the perfect love that you have given us that casts out every worry, every burden, and we walk in what you have for us. We declare health and wholeness. We declare, God, your presence to invade our hearts and our minds. Lord, do what only you can do. Do what only you can do, and we thank you in advance. Come on, for 10 more seconds, can you lift up a shout of praise, honoring the Lord for who He is, for what He has done. Come on, let's sing this out one more time today. up one more shout of praise let's honor the king of kings today come on we exalt you jesus we serve you lord we worship you father come on thank you jesus thank you lord come on lift up a praise today thank you jesus thank you jesus i would ask if we are excited to be in the house of god but i feel like it's pretty obvious there is a group of people who are hungry for what the Lord is doing in his house, amen? Why don't you take that excitement, greet five or 10 people, tell them how amazing it is to see them in the house of God today. Welcome someone in that you see that has that white bag, it is their first time, they are new today. Man, what a hunger and expectancy we have in the house today. As you make your way back to your seats, go ahead and turn your attention to the screen for some video announcements.
the PR way. Sunday, April 21st, I will be there to speak to the business owners and leaders of Fearless. I have the opportunity to personally coach some of the leadership of many of the country's Fortune 500 companies. I'm going to be sharing with you exactly what. If you are a business owner and want to network with other like-minded individuals, register for our April 21st Fearless Business Gathering today. For everything else and more, visit our website at fearless.church. Now I'm handing it off to our Fearless Pastors, Christy and Jeremy Johnson. We love you, Fearless. Hey, what's up? My name is Jeremy. This is my wife, Christy. We're the lead pastors here at Fearless, and we are so excited to say hi to you, to welcome you to this amazing family. Yes, one of our values is family's our commitment, and we want it to feel like that. We want it to feel like family where you can develop deep, authentic relationships with one another. And on your first time here, we actually have a gift for you. More than the gift though, we would love to sit down, have coffee with you, hear your heart, and hear what God wants to do in your life, champion the vision that God has on your life. So welcome to the Fearless family. Welcome, welcome this morning. If it is your first time or first time in a long time, can you shoot your hands up really high all over this place? Come on, Fearless, let's put our hands together for all these people raising their hands at our first time. We welcome you today. This is a big growing family. And we are so excited that you are here. We hope you feel loved. We hope you feel connected to. Go ahead and get keep your hand raised until you get one of these white bags. It's a little bit light, but we want to fill it with a gift. If you go to the shipping container right over here, we can give you a gift and we want to connect with you further. Come on, can we put our hands together, church, one more time for who God's bringing into this house? We love our brothers and sisters that are coming. Amen, amen. How many men of God are in this house today? Come on, how many men in this room want to learn how to become men of God, strong men, men who know how to pray? Come on, how many girls and wives would say, I want my men to have an upgrade, a godly spiritual upgrade? Three of you, come on ladies, we want them, all men in LA to get an upgrade, come on. This is the best way, send them off to camp. Amen, girls are yelling out now, send them off to camp including my husband, he could use one too, an upgrade. And they're gonna kill some snakes, I'm sure, and kill some demon snakes as well in the spirit. And y'all are gonna have an awesome time. So wives, don't ask your husbands. Just go ahead right now, get your phone out and just sign your, your man up, sign your man up. Come on, tell your man right now you're going. Do y'all have, y'all don't have any men, anyone married? Who is that? That was the Lord's voice telling you to go to man camp? in living form right now. That was the voice of the Lord coming down. Thank you, Lord, for confirming that this is from you. Amen, so sign up, scan this QR code. If you need help, we wanna help you go. If that's stopping you, we don't want money to be a thing that's stopping you. Pastor really has a vision for everyone, all the men of God to come and just go in 40 acres of land out in the middle of nowhere, do a bunch of fun stuff, but also just in their spirit, encounter something fresh and come back so fired up. So men, let's go out there. Come on, become men of God. And, and you're going to have, there's going to be worship the word. And I don't know, y'all are going to do some crazy other things. So it's going to be fun. Amen. And also how many serve here at church? How many are serving on the dream team? Can we give it up for some of these people that are lifting their hands? There's more than that. They're being humble. I want to encourage you guys. My, my dream would be that all believers, everyone, and that is the word of God, it's not just me, it's kingdom thinking that we all are servants of God, amen. And so as you come in this place, maybe that you're not a Christian yet, you're not a believer, this is for you today. But those that are believers, any Christians in this house? You're called to be a servant. You're called to be a servant. I would love for you to come and, and, and get your hands dirty and just begin to serve the house of God, serve this city. And if you wanna learn more, it's very easy. You just scan this and you just get some online classes, really quick classes, so you can start utilizing the gifts and stir up those things that God has inside of you, amen, amen. Anyone ready to give to the Lord today? Any cheerful givers, happy givers? 
It's a joy to serve the Lord. It's a joy to worship Him in giving. And if you want to do that, you can scan this QR code, text the word give. There's also some envelopes if you want to go old school way. And you can give that way through the buckets that are going to be coming by. And it says this in John 12. Six days before the Passover celebration began, Jesus arrived in Bethany, the home of Lazarus. The man he had raised from the dead. A dinner was prepared in Jesus' honor. Martha served and Lazarus was among those who ate with him. Then Mary took a 12 ounce jar of expensive perfume made from the essence of nard and she anointed Jesus' feet with it, wiping his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance. Isn't that beautiful? When you begin to give extravagantly, do you know it releases a fragrance to God? It re releases an aroma to God when you begin to give and it releases his fragrance. But Judas, the disciple who would soon betray him, said that perfume was worth a year's wages. It should have been sold in the money given to the poor. Not that he cared for the poor. He was a thief. And since he was in charge of the disciples' money, he often stole some for himself. The only one that had problems with giving was Judas. Be careful that you're not the Judas that has a problem with the person giving. Jesus replied, leave her alone. Leave that person alone. Stop criticizing. This is what we're supposed to be doing is giving. Leave her alone. She did this in preparation for my burial. You will always have the poor among you. You will not always have this with me, not always have me. Listen, this is what this is picture is. This is a picture of just open-handedness, giving extravagantly, and it's sacrificial giving. For God so loved the world that he did not keep, he did not take, but for God so loved the world that he what, church? He gave, he gave. It was sacrificial. It wasn't just a little giving. It wasn't just an easy giving. It was his only son that he gave as a sacrifice. So God's going, hey, I gave you life. How can you sacrificially do something? You can do it in giving. Now, you could give it in money, in time, in resources, but one of the things is your finances. Why? Because money has our hearts. Some of us get uncomfortable when we talk about money because it has our heart. He goes, I want all of you. I want your heart. I want everything. I don't really need your money. I just really want your heart. So to get to your heart, I might need you to give your money. So God, God, God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He can pay for, for the church. He can pay for rent. You're not paying for rent today. You're being obedient to God. This is an unlocking of the supernatural in your life when you begin to sacrificially give the, the picture of this woman who didn't give a rip about what other people thought. And she gave fearlessly. Come on, any fearless givers in this house? Come on, let's be the modern day Marys. Let's rise up and just give like that. Some of you are vision builders. We're continuing to raise money for the vision. You have any vision builders in the house you've been giving every month? Yes, a, a lot of you are raising your hands. Thank you for continuing to give to the house. Also, your partners with us. Anyone that are as fearless partners, can you lift your hands and come on, shout a little. Y'all, y'all, hey, if you want to be part of any of this, it's just continuously giving so you can give me and Pastor courage to make big decisions and to dream big for this city. How many know we need to love on a city until they ask why? We're going to keep doing it. That's what fearless is all about. So, Lord Jesus, we praise you. We thank you, Lord. When we even talk about giving, Lord, I thank you that your presence is here. You love those. You love those that have a heart that want to open their hands out. We don't want to take kingdom giving is, is open-handedness, God. We can't outgive you. We can't give too much. Lord, we know you're going to be faithful. These are seeds, Lord. We continue to give seeds into good soil. We know, Lord, it will bring forth a harvest. Lord, that, that will, will be pressed down, shaken together, running over. In Jesus' name, come on, everyone says, amen, amen. Off, offering buckets are coming by. We have one more worship song for you guys and then incredible word. Are y'all excited for the word of God? It's going to be good today. So, yes. After the buckets have passed, you guys can stand to your feet and worship with us. I can 
mighty rushing wind to your mind. almost for us to feel like here it is Holy Spirit we're surrendered to you this morning we say have your way in us today do what only you can do God if we feel dry fill us up Holy Spirit Lord if we feel confused Holy Spirit fill us up 
God, if we feel discouraged and defeated, Holy Spirit, fill us up. Holy Spirit, I thank you, God. You're going to fill every area, God, of confusion, of lack, God. I pray right now, God, every demonic spirit that doesn't belong in this room be kicked out to every exit. Holy Spirit, we welcome your spirit, and every other spirit has to go. Come on, command every demonic spirit to go. Command every demonic spirit to go. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Here it is. The presence of God. Unspeakable joy. Here's His peace. Overwhelming you. Living water. We will never thirst again. Holy Spirit, fill us up right now. Fill us up right now. Just say that. Fill us up. Say, fill me up. Oh, come on. Just tell Him. Fill me up. 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 Yes. Thank you, Lord. Oh, that's it. That's it. Come on, have you come in for more? Have you come in not satisfied? Lord Jesus, a fresh touch, fresh oil, fresh fire, fresh power. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, God, activate your word right now. Let it be the bread of life, manna from heaven. Holy Spirit, speak to us individually and corporately. Speak to us. Do what only you can do, Holy Spirit. Transform us. And God, I just pray, God, for what's happening in our world right now, all the way in the Middle East. I pray for peace right now in that whole region. Can we come together as the church and pray? Come on, this is not politics, this is the Bible. Come on, we pray for peace in the Middle East, God. I just pray right now, Lord, anger, God, war would subside in Jesus' name. Have your way, Holy Spirit. I just pray right now, God, no more killings, no more death. We speak and release peace right now. Peace right now, peace right now. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Now just begin to do this, church. Just breathe in His peace. Just take a deep breath. Breathe in the Holy Spirit. Breathe out the fear. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you're doing right now. Because in your presence is fullness of joy. Thank you, Lord. Are you ready, church? There's going to be something so incredible. I want to invite you to lean in because there's something specific for every single person in this place. There's a special friend we have, Pastor Neil. He's here all the way from Australia. And come on, and he, he was in a town and I was like, man, it's perfect that he comes and speaks. Actually, Pastor Jeremy is in Australia preaching. While he's from Australia, he's here from Planet Shakers. Planet Shakers family is our family. And um, I, we've been with them, Pastor Neil, gosh, friends with them for over a decade, way over a de decade. In our youth ministry days, me and Jeremy were friends with Pastor Neil, Pastor Russell. And I just want you to know that his voice, Pastor Neil, as well as Pastor Russell, have, been, have made a profound impact on our lives and they've walked through a lot of stuff for Jeremy and I personally and in our church and all these things. We call them up many times for wisdom. And I'm telling you, he's got a lot of titles and I can't even remember them all, but he's the international director of Planet Shakers. He's, he's got such a powerful voice. He speaks to world leaders and he's come all the way to our house today to deposit something so special. So can we give him honor where honor is due as he comes and brings the word of God? Come on, fearless, give Pastor Neil a warm, big welcome. Come on, church, put your hands together. Hey, hey. Fearless LA, come on, let's give it up for Jesus in this place. So good to be with you. Uh, Pastor Christy and Pastor Jeremy, we've known them for so long. Their father, in fact, your father is, a, is one of our mentors and we've had a part to play in their life. I actually preached here. I've only ever preached twice in downtown LA. Well, uh, Also, I don't know if you call it downtown LA. I preached at one church LA with... Uh, Tore uh, a few years ago, and then I, and then I preached here in the nightclub for Fearless, and uh, that was a long time ago, and that was a bit more of a scary place to preach than here. Now, some of you are pretty scary, mind you, but no, not really. You're beautiful. 
and, uh, and Jeremy is uh, in Australia right now. I know right now most of you are just evaluating my beautiful Australian accent. You're like, wow, we love that. Uh, get over it. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I want to I pray. There's, there's a great sense of the presence of God here. I didn't do this in the first service. That there's, there's a sense of expectation in the place. I can just sense it. And, uh, you know, last night, I, the media teams, I've even changed them again, this service from last service. So they're going to have drama. And if they get it wrong, it's my fault, not their fault. But I just got this, sometimes you go into church and I have the privilege of preaching all over the world regularly in different locations. But there's just moments and I feel like right now, right here, is one of those moments God's about to do something. And, and for that to happen, your expectancy needs to rise. So I want you to forget about the person next to you. I don't care whether you've been to church a million times or this is your first time. My God is real and he wants to do something here and now. And if you want something to happen in your life right now, just before you do, there's a man over here. This man in the about the third row, sitting next to a lady in white. That's it. Yeah, you, the black black shirt. No, the black. No, no, you with the black jacket on, right here with the white. That's it. <laughs> wow, that would have been offensive if I'd referred to you that way, my friend. I was, <laughs> I wasn't doing that. <laughs> They're all pointing to him. I'm like, no, no, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> sorry, sorry if you took it that way, man. <laughs> but I see you, my friend, and you got leadership stamped on your life. But you also come from an environment where everybody's told you you can't really make it. Is this your wife next to you? Hold hands, hold hands, hold hands. Responsibility is about to fall upon you. And, and every time responsibility has fallen upon you in your spirit, you want to run away from it. Because the, the message in your mind is, you're not going to make it, you're going to screw it up, you're not going to get it right. But God wants you to know that he's positioned you for leadership. It's not based on what you haven't done, it's based on who you are. And together, you're about to come into a season of greater responsibility. And you're not going to mess it up. God's going to use you powerfully. God's going to do something through you. God, right now, we just speak life into his situation, belief into his heart, and leadership in Jesus' name. Now, I wasn't going to prophesy on you behind, but seeing as we made a joke, we may as well prophesy. you got a great spirit, my friend. I can just sense it. There's a great spirit. Like, like you can see the cup half full rather than half empty. Sometimes it annoys people because you like want to have fun and mess around. And, but, but actually, that's a symbol of you have the ability to see the best in people, in situations. But yet, not everything's been the best in your life, in your world, in the people around you, your family. But somehow you keep rising to the top. And, and I see the gift of a pastor. I'm not saying you have to go into church full-time ministry the gift of a pastor. In the Bible, it talks about the encourager, the one that comes alongside, the one that embraces, the one that sees the best. So in every situation, rather than just being the guy that everybody likes, in fact, right now, just lift your hands, my brother. I pray that there's a spirit of, whew, the gift of a pastor falls upon you, not just the attributes, but the gift. So God, right now, I pray an increased capacity. Jesus, do it on him right now in Jesus' name. That you would leave this place not just with an ability, but with an anointing to pastor. People around you, people will come to you, people will be drawn to you. You'll get words that speak into people's lives of encouragement. God, I pray, just increase his capacity in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. My brother right here on the front row, this guy. You. There's something about you that stamps, I'm going to speak in a moment, so the whole message is for you, but it's for everybody, but influence. But here, here's the problem. Influential people are going to try and take you this way. So you've got influence stamped on you, you make sure that you have the influence. Don't let influential people tell you what you should do. 
God's given you influence. He's giving you a greater platform. I don't know what you do, but what I know is there's influence. I can see it stamped on you. But that influence, the enemy's going to want to try and pull that influence away. But actually, from this day on, if you'll dedicate yourself to the Lord, He'll give you greater and greater influence. Some things that people are chasing and people are going to say, wow, you're this because of this. I can even see like in social media, followers and stuff like that, that people are after, but it's coming to you. But make sure that the enemy doesn't snatch it through other influential people who say, this is what you've got to do. Learn from God and the people around you in the church, not the influencers. You have influence because he's giving you influence in Jesus' name. Come on, I want you to lift your hands. Lift your hands all around the room. I don't care whether you come to church or not. You know, here's what lifting your hands means. In the church, generally, it's the universal sign of surrender. When you're in the war and you want to surrender and not get killed, you lift your hands. But there's another meaning. And that's when you're a little kid and a little kid gets into trouble or doesn't know what to do. They throw their hands in the air and go, Mom, Mom, Dad, Dad, pick me up. I feel insecure. Well, I want to tell you, whichever way you're raising your hands today, you need help. He's here. He's going to help you. He's going to come through in your situation. It's not just a Pentecostal thing. It's, it's a thing that says, here I am, God, pick me up, God. Do what you purpose me to do. So God, in this room right now, I pray expectation levels would lift and we'd step into all you have for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Don't keep clapping. I don't want to waste time with you clapping me. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Turn the person next to you and say, get ready, get ready, get ready. Matthew 4, verse 14. You are the light of the world. See, what often happens is we as Christians actually think that Jesus is the light of the world. Well, the truth is that there's a Scripture that says that. But, the, but well, what He did is He said, I'm now going to leave the earth and I'm going to give you the same power that resided in me to raise me from the dead in you. And I'm going to leave and reflect my light that's on me through you. So guess what? You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. Not, not, not just this gathering is the light of the world, the church. You are the church. So you need to understand the revelation that you are the light of the world. Turn the person next to you and go, you are the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden, that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your Father in heaven. Today, I believe this scripture speaks of influence. Influence. We are meant to be influential. We're supposed to be the head and not the tail. We live in the world that we live in today. And if we're not careful as Christians, we can feel like we're this little minority that nobody wants to hear. But I want to tell you, it's not our fault that Jesus put purpose in us. And therefore, we want to do something great on the earth. So stop apologising for who we are and understand we're the church of Jesus Christ. We therefore have influence. We're a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. I love this picture. If you've ever been to Europe in medieval cities, they're still there. And the kings used to build them on top of hills, partly for safety and protection. But also when it was night time, you could actually see if you were lost from a long way away where these cities were because the lights would stand out in the distance because of their height and their isolation. I want to tell you the church is supposed to be the most influential uh, institution in a city. But if we're not careful, we can get caught in these four walls and forget that this is just the place to champion us, to rally us, to stir us, to be the influential church that God purposed us to be. So today I want to remind you, you are the light. You are the light. Jesus left so that you could reflect Him. You are the light. You are the light. And you, therefore, 
need to rise. This, this season that we're in is a contentious season of faith. But when Jesus was speaking to the church in this parable, he's actually speaking at a time that contention was happening for Christians. They were being burnt at the stake, hung upside down on crosses. They were put in prisons and locked in chains and fed. It's just enough to stay alive and live for years. And he's saying to them, come on, you're the light, come on, shine. And they're like, God, but it's hard. Hey, we're not being burnt at the stake. It's not that hard. We need to recognise that He's speaking to us today. But the, the parable, the metaphor is so important here because it talks about a lamp. Now, I don't know if you can remember, but when I was growing up, particularly my granddad had lamps and he, he used to take them camping and stuff, but he also used to have a, like a garage, a shed out in the back of his garden and, and he had no power there. So he used to use what's called a paraffin lamp, like a uh, a fuel-based lamp and you pour the fuel in and I don't know as a kid who knows that mum and dad say you can't do something that means I want to do something so when they say don't touch those matches don't touch that lamp you go I'm going to touch that lamp and as a boy there's just something like yeah and me and my friends he said whatever you do my granddad said don't fill it too much it'll blow up guess what I did fill it up I want to see it blow up and then you fill it up too much and it goes, poof, lose all your eyebrows. Like, wow, that was awesome. And then you get hit by your dad because of what you did. Oh, no, you're not allowed to say those things anymore. Politically not correct. But, but, but the truth is that he's talking about a lamp and that type of lamp needs to be lit and then it needs to be lifted up. Why? Because a lamp on the ground has little influence, but a lamp up high actually shines light so that all can enjoy, so the whole house can be lit. The key question is, is your lamp up on its stand? Or is it under a basket, under a bushel? I go to church and then nobody knows about it the rest of the week. You are the light. If you don't shine your light, who's going to? I don't go where you go. I don't work where you work. I'm not in your family. You are the light. You are the light. I travel on planes a lot. About 32 weeks a year, I'm traveling around the globe. And so I often sit next to people. And you know, 20 years ago, you'd sit down next to the person, you go, hi, and they go, hi. And then you just start having a conversation. Who knows that doesn't happen anymore? Half the time people have got AirPods in and you go, hi, and they don't give you anything. You think, rude person. Then you see them walk out and, oh, they couldn't hear me. But even if they don't, they don't talk to you. You go to the person and say, hi. And they go, hi. But then it gets worse. If your occupation is, hi, I'm a pastor. I'm a minister of the gospel. Here, you all go, wow, that's awesome. On a plane where they don't know you, they go, whoa, weirdo. And they sort of, if they didn't have AirPods in, they've got them in now. They've got magazines in front of them. They've got, they got, but if I say to them, I'm the leader of a not-for-profit, they go, wow, that's incredible. It's like, well, that's the same thing. But the whole point is how you speak determines whether people want to listen. I'm a lover of Jesus. People go, there's a weird guy. But you know, I start talking to them about what we do with young people and how we influence governments. And then the last thing I say is, oh, we got the largest church in Australia. And they go, wow, I'd love to come to your church. I'm like, I bet you if I told that first, you wouldn't love to come to my church. You see, the Bible is clear that we're supposed to lift our lamp as high as we can. And sometimes we present the gospel and it's overt. We've got to tell people about Jesus. If you're here and you don't know Him, we're going to give you an opportunity today to come to know Him. 
But you know, there's some forums in life where we can't do that anymore. And so we've got to be careful that we understand our place. But nevertheless, we light the lamp and we lift it up. Do you want to know Jesus? We light the lamp each week and we lift it up. Do you want to know Jesus? We go to our small group. You light it. Do you want to know Jesus? We go into our workplace and at the right moment, do you want to know Jesus? But it's up and it's down. And that's what we've done as a church for many years. But I believe God's wanting us to go to a higher level. But I want to show you today what we do in country so you understand we believe in presenting the gospel. Let's see this video. Up in New Guinea. This is because I change videos, I bet you. They were ready for the other video. I want both videos. Can you do it or did you kill it? I can't see anybody. I've got no idea what's going on. Lights are going down. That could mean it's all over and the service is about to finish. My name is Shane. Oh, not that one. I attend Paradise not that one. College. Stop. Stop. I am current. Stop. This one, that's it. That's in 2015, that God spoke now. to us about playing a part in discipling Turn the nation of Papua New Guinea. He gave us a word, believe. And with that word, we walked into a country we had never been to before. But as God went before us, doors flung wide open in every sphere and we encountered divine favour and such incredible influence. This August, we brought almost 300 people to P&G to impact the spheres of leadership, education, business, health and the church. We sent teams to three different regions. In Port Moresby, the nation's capital, we ran regional rallies and saw over 5,000 people attend and witnessed 1,500 decisions for Christ. In the region of Ley, over 20,000 people came out to our rallies and over 3,000 people were led to Christ. In Kimbay, we saw 25,000 people attend across three nights with 8,000 making decisions for Christ. Many were healed and delivered and set free. Throughout those two weeks, our teams also went to primary schools, secondary schools, prisons, hospitals and halfway houses carrying the love of Jesus and the redemptive power of the gospel. Our primary schools team went into 45 schools and were able to speak to 48,600 children. Our teams also visited 28 high schools and ran our program with about 25,000 students. The response to the message was also overwhelming as young people made a stand to change the future of a generation making a commitment to change the way they spoke to and treated one another. In each region, we visited the prison there and saw almost every prisoner give their life to Jesus. The trip finished with the night celebrations in the National Stadium, where we saw over 200,000 people attend and over 110,000 respond to the message of the gospel. Thousands healed and miracles as we stood with the people of Papua New Guinea to lift up the name of Jesus and declare a new chapter for the nation. Hundreds of thousands of lives have been touched by the power of God. Every missionary has returned with a testimony, a story to tell of lives changed. We believe that a nation is turning to Jesus. We believe it will be saved. So the truth is that I believe in presenting the gospel. I believe in making sure that we are overt in what we say. But my question is, Where's your light today? Because you see, since we made the decision and God spoke to us to go to the South Pacific, Fiji, Papua New Guinea, Samoa, Tonga, we've seen over 388,000 decisions for Christ. But not because we're great, He's great in us. But He's great in you as well. And it's not about whether I'm going to do something great or you're going to do something great. It's Him doing something great in us. And each one of you has a purpose and he wants to use you. So if we're going to position ourselves to get our light in the right place, then we've got to change our thinking. I wrote a book called Think Like a King. Well, you know, why did I call it that? Because we need to understand who we work for. His name is Jesus. His name is King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He is the risen one. And therefore, that means that we are actually His sons and daughters. That means we are heir. 
We are heirs to his throne. We are royalty. Ooh, turn to the person next to you and say, you are royalty. You see, if you get a revelation of who you are, then suddenly you don't get caught up on what you can't do. You get caught up on what He can do through you. You are sons and daughters of the King of Kings. That means that you're a king, you're a queen. Why, why, why would I call a book Think Like a King? Because kings are different to emperors. We live in a society right now where most people around us are like emperors. It's all competition. It's all take out another guy so that we can be better. But actually, what you've got to understand is that's how emperors think. They bring bloodshed. They kill off other people. But in the kingdom, we understand that I can be sitting next to a king. I can be sitting next to a queen. And each one of us has a purpose. That means each one of us has a patch. Each one of us has a place that God has put aside for us. But kings don't make themselves. Kings don't create something. They're born into it. Yeah. So when you're born again, you're born into a kingdom. And you need to understand that you have a reign, you have a rule, you have an ability, you have a purpose. Therefore, whether you're acting, sorry, whether you're ruling as a king or you're being prepared to become the king, Nevertheless, you're a king. You know, when a king is born, when they're about 12 months old, they start to teach them how to walk correctly, how to treat people correctly, how their elocution to speak correctly. And you know that the latest king of England, for example, spent over 70 years waiting to become the king. Some of you get frustrated because you can't get a job in a week. Some of you go, but I, I, I think God's got this for me and I'm still waiting. No, no, you're not waiting like it's not going to happen. You're just getting ready, getting ready, getting ready because God has put a purpose on your life and you are a king. So some of you have got to change your thinking. So let's shift for a moment here. You're going to lift the light. You are the light of the world. We're going to do it at church. I'm going to do it every time I open my mouth to preach the gospel. I'm going to lift the light, but then I put it down, I turn it off, then I light it again, then I put it up. But there must be a better way where we can lift our light and not only do we not we leave it, but it actually grows and it increases. We've got to change our thinking. We've got to recognize that each one of us is purposed to do great for God. And we're born with this royalty in our lives. Our lives aren't coincidence. Our aren't, lives aren't by chance. Because I hear stories of people who were born seemingly on the wrong side of the tracks. I hear people who were born on the right side of the tracks. But it's not based on your circumstances. It's based on who you are related to. King of kings. Kings. Queens. You are the light. You are the light. He wants to use you. And yes, he wants you to present the gospel overt. But he also wants you to understand that he hasn't placed you where you are by coincidence or by chance. You know, when I first went to Papua New Guinea, I, I went there and I wrote a letter because we decided God was calling us to disciple nations. Sounds so cool. But you know, when you're responsible for doing that as the International Missions Director of Planet Shakers, I wrote to the Prime Minister of that country, a, a country of 17 million people, and I wrote to him and I said, we'd like to come and talk to you about how we can partner to help your nation get better. When, you, when I hear that, I go, wow, that is crazy. Imagine writing to a leader of a nation to say, no, we're going to come and you need our help. So I actually didn't think he was going to respond. But I felt like I've done my job. This is what God's telling us. Two weeks later, to my amazement, he responds. So we take four business people and myself and we go to meet the prime minister of this country. When I arrive, there's a vote of no confidence in Parliament, which simply means that there's huge political unrest in the country. And the Prime Minister's office rings when I land and says, we can't meet you. I'm like, what? We flew all this way, paid all this money. But you know what we're like as Christians? That's how we're thinking on the inside. On the outside, I said to his secretary, oh, no, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but I wanted to punch it. No, no, thank you. Thank you. And, and so... Because who knows that many of the plans, we have plans, but the Lord's purpose prevails. His purpose goes above what our plan is. So stop looking at your plan saying, it's not working. Keep looking to Him. He is the light. He's going to work through you. You become His light on the earth. 
So they ring me back a few hours later and say, look, we're going to get one of the senior politicians to meet you. He's the finance minister. He's like, like sixth in line. You know, when you're going to see the leader and now you're going to see the sixth in line, it's like, couldn't you even give me the second? And I'm like, oh, thank you very much. Yes, we'll meet him. We go to meet him and he, he walks in and he walks in like this. You've got 15 minutes. I'm like, buddy, 15 minutes? I tell you, I'll give you 15 minutes. I've paid all this money to be here. And, and I went, thank you very much, thank you very much. But internally, I'm just, meh. Nah. We sit down at the table. One hour and 45 minutes later, I'm still talking to this guy. He was the education minister then, had formed before he was the finance minister, had great influence in the nation. And he talked to me about, you guys could help us with education in this nation. And we started to talk and we started... Anyway, he wasn't the Prime Minister yet. You're not living in your purpose yet. But God has a purpose. And in your heart, you know, but don't get caught up in what you're doing. Get caught up in who he is and what he's spoken over your life. And James and I would have dinner every time I'd go to the country, twice a year. And we connect and we became great friends until one day I receive a text from James. James says to me, Neil, don't tell anybody, but I'm about to go to the governor's office to be sworn in as the new prime minister of the country. And because I'd built relationship with him for four years, it's not like he's the PM and I'm trying to get something out of him. We're just friends now. So in 2019, he became the prime minister. And then if we look on the screen, have we got photos? Sorry, you guys are going, which photos? If they can find them, there's me praying. Oh, this. In, in, last year, we had some meetings in the country. And this is James Marape, the Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea. Now we're in 2023, but it was 2015 when I thought I was meeting the sixth in office. Yeah. Ah, but if you stick with God, yeah. he knows what he's got planned for you. It wasn't a mistake that I didn't meet the former Prime Minister because God had a plan. And in front of a large crowd, we prayed together for the nation of Papua New Guinea. He'd been voted back in for four more years and he just attended our event. This was a, a small event that we had with about 30,000 and he attended and, and he said to me, is this my inauguration? He said, we don't have that in our country and I've never spoken to such a large crowd of people. And for 10 minutes he spoke to the people and he talked about how God was going to use him. The next night he took our whole team, 100 people out to dinner at a buffet and he talked, which I didn't know, how his grandfather was one of the founding fathers of Christianity in the country that we were in. You see, God has a plan even in your family. God has a plan in your school. God has a plan in your purpose. But, but you need to understand that you are the light. He wants to use you. He wants you to change your thinking. Think like kings. Rise above the way you feel and step into what He has for you. So if I'm not a king right now, but I was born a king, I'm not a queen right now, but I was born a queen, then what's going on? My life is about getting ready for my moment. It's coming. He wants to use you. He wants to position you. He wants you to shine. Matthew 5 verse 15 and 16 says, Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. They lift it up. Are you lifting your light up? And it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your godly deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Our purpose, our primary purpose is connected. All of us are supposed to, through our light, through our purpose, through our influence, bring glory to the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus over LA. Lift up the name of Jesus over California. Some people say to me, California is the most ungodly state in America now. Ah, persecution's a great time to rise up and become who God has purposed you to be. Not to get consumed with what we don't have, but be consumed with who we know. Therefore, lift up the name of Jesus. Bring glory to His name. John 17 and verse 22 says, I'm given the glory. You're given the glory. You're given the glory of God. You're given the light. You are the light of God by Jesus. What? To manifest His glory on the earth. 
Do you know what the word glorify means? The synonym of the word glorify is to excel. So in other words, the best way that you can bring glory to God is become the best in your field. Become the best barista, become the best actor, become the best accountant, become the best parent. We live in a crazy world. Now, if anybody here is related to them, I'm sorry. But you obviously know the Kardashians. The Kardashians are known for doing nothing. And they make a lot of money out of doing nothing. We just watch them, observe, and, and it's cool. And I'm not bagging them, but I'm just saying, why is it that we talk to them about things like, how do you build a successful marriage? I was watching a show the other day. One of the family members, I think she's had 19 marriages. No, no, she hasn't, but you know, she's had a few. But the point is because they've become the most excellent in the television industry that people want to know. So let's stop complaining as the church. Let's stop complaining about politicians. Let's stop complaining about sports people. Let's become those people. Let's become the most excellent in our field. Let's rise in our purpose. So why? We bring glory. We bring light to the name of Jesus on the earth. You see, we are the church of Jesus Christ. Therefore, we've got to rise and become who His purpose does to be. So how do we become more effective? Let's not reach down and lift the light and put it up. we we'll present the gospel, eat the light and put it up and present the gospel, reach down and put it up. Let's put it on a lampstand and let's see how we can stand back and it keeps shining, keeps shining and it gets more because we become the most excellent. So it's overt, present the gospels. But as Francis of Assisi famously said, present the gospel and if you must use words, so be it. In other words, we've got to be overt but we've got to be covert. Oh, who's the best sports person in the nation? Are they in this room today? I believe they could be. Who's the best student in this room? I believe they could be. Because when they stand on that stage and they get asked a question, they represent our God. And then people don't look at them and go, what, you're a Christian? They go, hey, I want to become a Christian if he's a Christian. Come on, church. It's time for us to be most excellent in what we do. Overt and covert, it's not either or. But in a world that currently says they hate the church, then let's go on the quiet. Let's go on the offensive. Let's become the best so that our loud voices can be heard through who we are rather than what we say. Excellence in everything that we do. Now we're going to show another video, and it's the first video you showed, which was awesome. But we started a school. Because the education minister who became the finance minister, who's now my friend, James Maripay, the PM, said to us, you need to create a values-based leadership curriculum. So I started a thing called the Believe Institute. Now, if you've ever seen that, that movie with Robin Williams and he creates the Gesundheit Institute, well, I thought that's a cool name, so I'm going to call it the Believe Institute. What do I know about education? I don't tell anybody, but I didn't even pass high school. Now I am the leader of the most fastest growing education institution in the whole South Pacific. <laughs> I'm the CEO. How funny is God? We ran a pilot two years. Whew. Education is slow. Two years. But guess what? Last week, Fiji made it a compulsory education, do our leadership course one hour a week in every school in the nation. Guess what? I met with the First Lady of Kenya in November last year, at the beginning of next year. She wants to make it compulsory for all 10.8 million of high school students to, be, to do the course. Guess what? PNG has already started and it's already compulsory and there's over 2 million students every week that are going to do the course. And guess what? It's not the Bible. Don't tell anybody. It is. We just don't put scripture in verse. Oh, is that wrong? Well, the Bible didn't say it will return. It won't return void if you put scripture in verse. You just put it. And guess what? Muslim countries. Guess what? Hindu countries. They won our education program. It's called covert in what we do. But we have some major challenges about identity. It's not about sexuality. It's not about sexuality. 
the issues that we're facing right now, it's not about gender fluidity. It's about identity. People don't know who they are. But if they know our God, they'll discover who they are. We don't need to talk to the issue. We need to introduce them to our Jesus. So we got these kids. And just listen to what they say. Just by the way, this school that we did went from being in the middle of the nation with results to the top of the nation in results in the two years we ran the course. And the the, the Muslim principal, (laughs) he says to the international women's community on International Women's Day, what has singularly changed in my school is what the Believe Institute through their leadership course has brought. If we must use words, so be it. Let's watch the video, the testimonies of the students that did the course. My name is Shane. I attend Paradise College. I am currently doing grade 11 or year 11, and I've been in the Believe Institute for two years now. The thing I like about Believe Institute is that it molds future leaders. The most important lesson that I've learned was about leadership. Leadership is not about commending people around. Leadership is about helping others, serving them, and putting their needs and wants first before yours. And one thing I want to change in Papua New Guinea as a future leader for this great country is that I want to change the mindset, make it become a growth mindset. I want us, as future leaders, to say that we can make things happen. My favorite part of Believe Institute is getting people to step out of their comfort zone. You get them to step out of the box, do more. The most important lesson I would say it was women in leadership. Women are not born leaders in our mentality. So it, it would be great to see a women prime minister. And my favorite part of Believe Institute is the teaching of students. They teach students how to be a better leader and also how to be a better student and a person. I've progressed from being a shy student into like more confident. I could be open to people, like sometimes, not all the time, but I'm still improving. The greatest lesson that the Believe Institute has taught me is about women in leadership. When I was younger, influenced by my cultural values, I used to think that women were not supposed to be in power. And after the Believe Institute, I now believe that all women and men are equal. I'd like to see more women in our government. Right now, there's been a lot of men and less women, and I believe that with more women in power, our country could change. I love that it encourages people to show their leadership skills, and for the future of PNG, I would like to see future leaders, not only leaders that are like adults, but also teenagers that could lift up other people, helping them to become leaders as well. So in that nation, the biggest issue is misogyny. Men do not allow limit. In fact, the, 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 the average young girl under the age of 18 is beaten by either her brother or her father uh, repeatedly for at least 10 years of her life. So when you hear those statements, it's only ever been seven women in any form of politics in the nation. But then a young boy who admits, I don't even think women are supposed to be involved... Now he's one of the student leaders of one of the biggest schools in the nation. We didn't tell them women or men. We just said God has a purpose for your life. We use scripture and we didn't put scripture in verse, but we use the words and it will not return void when you present the gospel. You see, you need to understand that God wants you to be overt and covert, but he wants you to be the light. He wants you to be the most successful in what it is that you're called to do. And we as the church come together, we rally, we rally. And then we go out into the marketplace every day and we represent our Jesus. We bring glory to His name, understanding that we are royalty. And therefore we're kings, we're queens, we're people that arise in greatness and do great things for Him. And we will take back what the enemy has tried to steal. Ah, fearless church will rise and do what only it can do here in LA. A city on a hill. A city on a hill. A city on a hill can, can, cannot be hidden. We need to understand that God is rallying us. God is growing us because He wants you to be the light. You to be the light. And as your thinking changes, suddenly it's not just a word picture that Jesus speaks of. It's a community of believers that truly win, that they believe that they can win a city. The church is a haven for those who know God, 
But we've got to understand the church is far much more than that. It should be a place of hope for those that don't yet know God. People are going to be attracted to this place. But remember, you are this place, not these walls. And I want them to be attracted to you because you're the most excellent. If you're a scientist and you don't have letters behind your name, nobody believes you. Nobody listens to you. So you might need to go and get a doctorate so that you can be valid in that world. But you know what? At the right moment, people are going to go, he's a scientist, but he's different. There's nothing worse than a barista that gives you a coffee and it's like slams it on the table. But you know when they're nice and they make it with a great picture and it's perfect and, and they're like, I hope you enjoy it, sir. You go in week in, week out. And at some point, you're going to go, you're always so up. What is it? Ah, you are the light. You are the light. A city on a hill can not be hidden. I want you to stand to your feet all around the room. Musicians can come. 1962. An American astronaut by the name of John Glenn was the first man to circumnavigate in the spacecraft friendship, the Earth. But one of the experiments that NASA decided to do was to see if light could be seen singularly from the orbit. And so they found the most isolated city on Earth. It's called Perth, West Australia, where I grew up. Perth, West Australia is 2,200 miles from any other city. So they wanted to see if in isolation from a long way away they could see light suddenly come on. Oh, I want to remind you of something. You might feel isolated. But you know what? Light shines brighter in isolated places. You might feel like you're alone in that school, but light shines brighter when somebody stands out. You're in an industry that people say, you can't be like that. It's just with a girl who's got 26 million followers on China's version of Instagram in a country that doesn't believe in Jesus. Every concert, she sings two full worship songs and the government get her to do all their promotion. See, the light sometimes shines brighter in isolation. 1962, believe it or not, I wasn't born. So I hear about this story. Perth is now called the City of Lights because at 11 p.m. they sanctioned the whole city to turn on their lights. Street lights, school lights, building lights, homes. Get your flashlight out, every light we can get. 11 o'clock, there was a countdown. Everybody turned it on. You hear John Glenn in NASA on radio from the orbit. Wow, it's incredible, I can see it. At the moment they turned it on. But guess what, I wasn't there. I wasn't born. Until 1996, John Glenn decided to do it again. And I'm like, I'm in. So you can come to church every week and attend, tick the box, I go to church. Well, you can go, I'm in. Not in just to attend and praise and worship. That's what we do. It stirs us. But it motivates us to go week in, week out into dark places. We are the light. So I thought, I I'm in. But you know, I'm a man and why waste time just putting on a light? I thought I may as well do two things at once because all girls know that men can multitask better than women, right? Wow, that went down like a lead balloon. More girls here than boys, obviously. My wife always says, can you do two things at once? Sheesh. So I fired up our jacuzzi at home, outdoors. Fired at some friends and we got flashlights. And at 11 o'clock, we started to count down, 10 to 11. 10, 9. We turned on our flashlights, turned on the house lights and all the street lights came on. And John Glenn, the next day in the news, is like, it was more spectacular than I could ever remember. 
the growth was incredible of the city. The, the city had grown by nine times since 1962. 36 years. But I remember having this thought just for a moment. I wonder if I really participated because I just used my flashlight. But imagine if we allowed ourselves to think my light doesn't count. Because then the building could say, it doesn't matter. Street could say, it doesn't matter. My house, don't turn the lights on. And if everybody just said, mine doesn't really matter, then John Glenn would have never seen anything. But the unique purpose of the church is we stand together. Oh, you're isolated tomorrow. You're in an industry that I don't understand. You're in a school that I've never been to and never will. You're in a family that I don't get. But if you will have the courage to say, I am the light. Suddenly, in the east of LA, a light goes on. In the west of LA, a light goes on. In the city of LA, a light goes on. And we become a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. So no longer say, how can I make a difference? Who am I? Understand God has given you a unique purpose. You are royalty. Lift it up, put it it back there. Lift it. It's time for us to think differently and have our light on all the time as high as we possibly can so that we can start to light and win cities for the purposes of Jesus. I'm stupid enough to believe that Papua New Guinea one day will be saved. I'm stupid enough to believe that Melbourne, Australia, where Planet Shakers Church is, will one day be saved. I just get a sense that there may be some people who are stupid enough to believe that LA can be saved. We could win a city. We could change a nation. We could see a change to the earth. But it starts one little flashlight. Not thinking it's insignificant, but recognising you are the light. You are the light. You are the light. Close your eyes. Maybe you've lost your confidence. Maybe you've said that statement, who am I, what can I do? If you only knew, Pastor Neil, what I've done, If you only knew what I'd done, not always positive. But I want to remind you today, it's not about what I've done or you've done, it's about what He's done for us. So therefore, we've got to recognise that He's the ultimate light. And if you say yes, He uses you as a reflector to touch the whole earth. But maybe you've lost your confidence. Maybe you've done something wrong. Maybe the enemy is plaguing your head. Maybe you're saying, how am I not going to lose my faith in this industry? And all those things that the enemy does and it's holding you back. And you say, God, give me fresh confidence today to stand for you. Give me fresh confidence to burn my light for you. Give me fresh confidence to be fearless in this dark place. Well, every eye is closed. I don't care whether it's one or it's all of you. You say, would you pray for me? It could be the smallest thing, could be the biggest thing. But you say, I want my confidence. I want a new level of authority. I want to get back to the place that I recognise I'm royalty. Then would you allow me to pray for you? And then we're going to pray for our city and we're going to believe something's going to shift in the atmosphere. But if that's you and you say, please pray for me, I want you, not in a scared way, but in a direct way, lift both hands in the air and say, I want fresh confidence. God, I want to be used by you. God, I want to be positioned by you. Don't care about the person next to you. This isn't the moment for that. Don't worry about what people think. Something's about to shift in your atmosphere. Something's about to shift around your life. Excellence is going to come to you. Some of you are going to hear from God that you've got to step up in the area that you're involved. Some of you have got to put in more time, more energy. Some of you have got to, got to, got to rise to be the best in your field. But right now, you've just got to get your confidence. 
God, I pray and I breathe confidence into people's spirits. I believe, Lord, in this place right now, something is being established that will be established for many years to come. Lord, this is a church that, that Pastor Jeremy and Pastor Christy, Christy held on and held on and held on and held on. And there was dark, dark days and there was moments where, is this what we're really supposed to do? But they stayed in central LA because they said, we're going to win this city. God, we're going to do something now. There's an army of believers that are rising with them. And I pray that they would get a fresh confidence in this room. They would step to a new level. God, I pray where we talk of 380,000 saved in the South Pacific, do it again right here in LA. Do it again through the people of this church, covert or overt. God, we pray that You would start to stir them right now. Now keep your hands raised. God, I declare royalty over each one of them. Kings and queens would rise up, not because I say so, but because when you died that death, whew, broken body, shed blood, it wasn't just to save our souls, it was to bring us into your family. We are now sons and daughters, kings and queens. We have a territory, we have a patch, we have a unique purpose. So God, I pray right now, make it clear to people. Whew, Give them an understanding that you've given them a realm of opportunity. You've given them a realm of responsibility. You've given them a capacity. Oh God, I pray right now that they would start to rise in whose they are, which family they belong to. Lord, not their natural family. Lord, their God-given purpose and destiny. And I pray in this room right now, something would shift across people's hearts and lives. And they would step into who their purpose to be. Now we're going to change it for a moment. I want you to take one person in your workplace, in your family, in your setting. And I want you to dare to believe for them. Because you know that thought you had of that person? That wasn't coincidence. You were driving down the road. You're going to leave here today and you're going to get a thought of a person you should speak with. Because the way that the light grows is one light touches a dark place and another light goes on another light touches another dark place another light and before long the sequence of those lights start to connect together right now there might be some distance between some lights but if you'll just reach one in this room we could suddenly see 500 or 1000 And then those 500 or 1,000 could see one more light and then it's 2,000 and then it's 10,000 and then it's 100,000. It doesn't happen just because we hold one meeting one day. It happens because people get the revelation. I feel isolated, but I'm lighting my light. I'm turning my flashlight on. I'm making a decision to become a follower of Jesus. So right now I want you to get one person's name. Not hundreds, one person. Could be a mum could be a dad, could be a friend at work, could be a former girlfriend, boyfriend. I I don't know. It could be a work colleague. But you don't have to think about it because God's already been speaking to you. Nothing happens by chance. When you understand purpose, you just step into it. So know that person. And I want you, I'm going to pray that we would start to see a revival. We would start to see growth, that we would start to see... And the way it's going to happen is your friend that you're speaking out their name in this environment right now is going to have their light switched on. They're going to come to Christ. You are the light. You are the light. You are the light. If we do it all together, a city on a hill cannot be hidden. So God, right now I pray for each and every person right across this environment. I pray for their friend for the family member, the person that they're getting in their heart. I want you just to start saying that name out loud, declaring that they are saved, that they come to know Christ, that you get an opportunity to know them, that they get an opportunity to know Jesus. So Lord, right now I pray with them and where two or three stand in your name, it is done. So God, we stand believing for a whole harvest of souls to come to you. In Jesus' name, it is done, it is done, it is done. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. I wasn't going to do this. Are we okay for time? Just one more minute. She wouldn't tell me if I wasn't. She's looking at me. We're okay. We're okay. I don't know where I put my phone. Where did I put my phone? 
Somebody stole my phone. Wow, come on, man. That's... You told me you were doing okay, but you stole my phone. Only joking. I want to do this because I noticed you turned all the lights out. Cool. Well done, everybody. You turned all the, the neon off. It's in the first service. It didn't work very well. But here's what we're going to do. I want you all to grab your phone. Don't look at it. Just grab it. Don't look at it. So if you look at it, you've probably got three emails, two texts, and you'll get lost in phone land like this. Just don't look at it for a moment. But for those that are technologically challenged, probably everybody over the age of 40, you don't know how to turn your light on. Just start thinking. Don't turn it on yet. Don't turn it on. But just start thinking, how do I get that? If you've got an iPhone, you just pull it down, and there it is. Oh, there it is. But that'll still take some people about 10 minutes to get it. So just take your time. Other people, don't turn it on. And when I say turn it on, don't put your light out like this. <sighs> put your light again so we can't see it, okay? But I'm going to tell you in a moment, if John Glenn can get a whole city to turn their lights on at the same time, I want to leave you with the picture. And in a moment, I'm going to get the team to drop the lights. We're going to have our lights. And when I say one, two, three, your light's going to be on. I want you just to turn around. So just have your phone ready. You can turn your light on now, but put it like this. So I'm going to show you so that you can't get it wrong. See that little light? Like this. Now put it against your chest so we can't see your light. That's it. Nobody can see your light. Now, can we lose all the lights? Even the st- That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. There's still some light there. Can we lose that light? Or is that an emergency light? Nobody knows. It's, it's getting mystical. It's going, woo. Is that possible or not? I've got nobody giving me any indication. No, we don't think it is. Okay. Well, let's focus our attention. You guys can all see each other. But when it's dark, it's even better. I don't know, again, like a little kid, I love it when it's dark. It's naughty. But basically on the count of three, what we're going to do, and particularly focus on these people, which we can't see over there, but and those people over there. But what we're going to do is we're going to lift it up we're going to do and here's what I want you to get don't do it yet don't do it yet don't keep your phone down keep your phone down it's hard to keep a whole crowd together but when I sat in my jacuzzi and I put up my light I could have easily thought my flashlight has no purpose but see in a dark place even the smallest of light watch what it does one two three turn around now turn to each other turn around like this Suddenly what was dark is light. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. That's it. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Come on, let's put our phones down. Let's lift our hands. Let's just worship Jesus one more time.
on, sing that again today. Come on, how many of you are thankful at the name of Jesus? Darkness has to flee at the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If we could bow our heads, close our eyes all across this room. We want to give one more opportunity. Pray one more prayer today before we close this incredible service. If you're here today and you feel dead on the inside, we know that God did not send his son to die, to resurrect, to do all that he did. Jesus did not come to make bad people good, but he came to give people that were dead his life. Today, if you feel dead on the inside and you need the life that only Jesus can give you, the gift that we have to receive, that we have to allow into our heart, if that's you and you'd say, man, I know that's for me. I grew up in church, but I walked away in my faith. Maybe it's your first time and you're saying, there is something that I need, that I see in others, that life that I do not have. If that's you today, I just want you to lift your hand on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Come on, hands are going up all across this place. Hands are going up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm gonna count every single hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Eleven. 12, keep those hands up. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, come on. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Come on, thank you, Jesus. 31, 32, 32 people giving their life to Jesus today. Come on, can we make some noise? Can we celebrate as heaven is celebrating? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray this prayer together as a fearless family. Repeat after me. Say, dear Jesus, forgive me. Cleanse me of all the mistakes that I've made. I repent and turn from a lifestyle of sin. Come into my heart become my personal Lord and Savior of my life from this day forward. In Jesus' name, and everybody shouts, amen, amen, amen. Come on, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Let me say a couple quick things before we run off. We'll be done here in an hour, tops. Just kidding. We'll be done in just a moment. If you prayed that prayer, Hold on, don't move, don't move just yet, just yet. If you prayed that prayer, we wanna connect with you. What a prayer, what a life to commit to. But that comes with changes. That comes with support, stewardship, help. Give us the opportunity to help equip you in what God has for you. I'm gonna be down here near the baptismal afterward. We have a book for you. We're gonna have an altar team come down as well if you need prayer. Maybe you're saying, man, I'm a believer. I didn't pray that prayer, but I, I need to pray for my family. I need prayer over anxiety, over fear. I'm having restless nights. Whatever it is, nothing is too big. Nothing is too small for our God. Don't miss this moment of what the Lord wants to do. Man, we are so honored and excited to have you here with us today. If it was your first time, I know I met people all across this service that got that white bag or it's your first time today. Even if you didn't get that bag, make sure to swing by our info bar. We got a team there on the other side of this container. We wanna get you the gift, but most importantly, we wanna connect you with our discipleship leaders, our men and women that wanna sit down, hear your story, pray with you. If we're really gonna be a family, give us that opportunity. We love you guys. Have an amazing day. Don't forget about our men's camp coming up in about a month. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Grab some food. Get to know someone. Meet someone. Have an amazing day. We'll see you guys soon.